Hello and welcome to show number 12 of OCPL Presents Shakespeare on Stage. We have an exciting lineup for you today. So I'm going to start right off with our SSITP announcements. And I have some beautiful things to share with you. And the first thing is the set of kids. This is their first scene. They painted this. Um, a couple of days ago with Steve Orlando, who's a, a wonderful artist, uh, art teacher at Dr. Week's school. And in uh, one hour and 15 minutes, socially distanced, they managed to paint this set and the other set that I'm going to show you. This is uh, an orange grove, and it's taken from a real orange grove in Messina, Italy, which is where Much Ado About Nothing takes place. They're doing two scenes for Much Ado About Nothing, seven, kids between the age of um, 11 and 16. Fifth graders through 11th graders. And then the other set that I'm going to share with you from the same show, also done by the kids, is the scene where Beatrice goes to a church to pray because she thinks that Hero is dead. Her cousin Hero is dead. Uh, when, of course, it's a trick, but still, she believes it. So this is the, a, a picture of a church in Messina, Italy, and it really is taken from a church in Messina, Italy. And again, these two sets were done by that group of seventh, uh, uh, fifth through twelfth graders. Uh, and it's just fabulous. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Fabulous stuff. My hat's off to Mr. Orlando. He's, he's so talented. And the kids are so talented. And uh, it's, it's a great thing. The show is tomorrow. Everybody can, uh, can pray to the God of their choice for no rain for tomorrow for 2 o'clock so we can do the show. Uh, we already practiced to do it, the rain, just in case, under two tents and have the audience with umbrellas. But uh, we hope not to do it that way. And then, of course, we are working on the big show, which is a Much Ado About Nothing, and that goes on August 7th through the 16th in Thorndon Park's Amphitheater, and I think we're the only show, live show, running in town. So get your tickets. There are only 150 tickets per uh, performance, six shows, and uh, then there are 50 walk-ins, and it's free. Donation of at least $5 or premium tickets. And I won't go through that because I don't have time. So I think I'm going to throw it over to my friend, Kara Luddy from OCPL. And she's going to tell you all about the wonderful things going on at the library. Take it away, Kara. Thank you, Ronnie. And those paintings are absolutely gorgeous. I love seeing that. Um, <laughs> so thanks for showing us. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, digital library card sign up. So we are still offering digital library cards because libraries are not fully open right now. So you can visit our website and when I'm done doing this whole spiel, I'm gonna show everyone the URL so that you can see it and you'll know how to get to it. So this is a temporary digital library card that you can sign up for on our website. This is if you do not have a card already. So if you do have a card, but you can't remember what your information is, just send us an email. The email is reference at onlib.org. Again, that's reference at onlib.org. And they'll be able to look up your information and help you get your card activated again, or give you directions on how to start a new one. So this temporary card allows you to get access to all of our online collections. So that's eBooks, databases. A lot of our online content providers also have free music, audiobooks, movies. Um, so it's just a really great resource, especially if you are not comfortable going in person to check out um, library books yet. But the nice thing about the temporary digital card is that it also lets you put items on hold for pickup at city libraries. So you can check out physical items with the digital card too, which is really cool. So once the library is fully reopened, which we don't have a date for yet, unfortunately, you will have to go to your local library to finalize that digital card. So you would just bring some ID that has a current address on it and they would be able to transfer it into a permanent card. So kind of going off of the digital library card, I wanna throw out um, our librarian specials. 
So again, you can go online and you can call your local city library and they will put together a surprise bag of books, music, magazines, or movies for you based on your interests. So this is a really great way to surprise your kids. It is included with your library card. Our librarians love it because it helps them be creative. It helps them, um, you know, throw together different items that, you know, you might not know about. So I'm going to show you how to get to that on our website so you can check it out. And I'm sorry if the rain in the background is drowning me out. Um, okay. Okay, so at the top here, you'll see it's onlib.org slash digital dash library card. And you can do this all online. And then for if you do not want to call and you want to place your librarian special order online, you can go to onlib.org slash librarian dash specials. So it's super easy. Um, check it out and if you have any questions, throw a comment below and I'll get back to you. So that is my OCPL update and I'm all what, done. <laughs> I, I have a quick question. If yeah. you have had a library card, but you don't have it, can't find it, don't know anything about it, but you knew you had one, uh, do you do the reference at onlib.org mm -hmm. first? Yep. You get your yep, do that first. Okay, beautiful. And they'll be able to pull that up for you if they have a record. And if they don't, you'll just make a new library card. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Kara. And now we move on to our dramatic pieces, and we're starting with uh, Dominic DiCaprio, who, who is doing a piece from Two Gentlemen of Verona. It's Act Two, Scene Three, his character's Launce, and I'm calling it, I Have Done Weeping. Don't want to take away his thunder. Go ahead, Dominic. Hey, twill be this hour that I have done weeping, or the kind of Lances have this very fault. I have received my proportion, like the prestigious son, and I am going with so protest to the imperial's court. I, I think Crab, my, my dog, be the sourest in nature dog that lives, my mother weeping, my father wailing, my sister crying, our, our maid howling, and our cat wringing her hands and on our house in great perplexity. And yet this cruel hearted Cur shed one tear. He is stone, a very pebble stone, and has no more pity in him than a dog. A Jew would have wept to see him at our parting. Why, my grandmom, having no eyes, look you, wept herself blind at my parting. Nay, I, I'll show you the matter of it. This shoe is my father. No, 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 this left shoe is my father. No, the left shoe is my mother. I, nay, that can't be so either. Yea, it is so, it is so, because this half the worst of saw. This shoe with the hole in it, my mother, and this shoe is my father, a vengeance on it, and, and there's a, a staff to be my sister. Laugh to be my sister, and, and and this hat is man, a maid, and I am the dog. Wait, no, 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 the dog is himself, and I am the dog. Wait, the the, the dog is me, and I am myself, and I, I, so, so I come to my father, a father, your blessing. And now should not the source a word for weeping, and now I should kiss my father. Well, he weeps on. Uh, so now I come to my mother. Oh, that she could speak now uh, like a wood woman. <laughs> well, I kiss her. <laughs> Why, there it is. Here is my mother's breath, up and down. <laughs> and now, now I come to my sister. <laughs> Mark the moan that she makes. And all while this dog sheds not a tear, nor speaks a word. But see how I lay the dust with my tear. Nice job. Very good, Dominic. Dominic will be back in a little bit. But first we have a sonnet from Kayla Ross. Uh, she's going to be doing sonnet 43 called When Most I Wink. Kayla, take it away. 
Uh, before well, you do this, Lee, just one thing. Um, I, I have received an emergency phone call. Um, so if we can move my pieces up, I need to, to return this call. It is a... You mean sooner? Sooner? Yes, much sooner. All right. Okay. Kayla, do you mind if we skip you? Yeah, go right ahead. Okay, so we're, we're moving on to uh, Simon Moody and Dominic DiCaprio, this time in a serious piece. Um, Henry VI, Part Three, Act Five, Scene Six. And uh, it's Richard III and Henry VI. Simon's uh, Henry VI, and Dominic is Richard III. Take it away, gentlemen. Good day, my lord. What at your book so hard? I, my good lord. My lord, I should say, rather. Tis sin to flatter. Good was little better. Good Gloucester and good devil were alike and both preposterous. Therefore not, good lord. Must confer. So flies the reckless shepherd from the wolf. So first the harmless sheep doth yield his fleece, and next his throat unto the butcher's knife. What scene of death has Rocius now to act? Suspicion always haunts the guilty mind. The thief doth feel each bush an officer. The bird that hath been limed in a bush, with trembling wings, misdoubteth every bush. And I, the hapless male to one sweet bird, have now the last art fatal object in my eye, where my poor young was lying, was caught and killed. Why, what a peevish fool was that of Crete, that taught his son the office of a fowl, and yet for all his wings the fool was drowned. Aye, heedless, my poor boy Icarus, thy father Minos, that denied our course, the son that seared the wings of my sweet boy, thy brother Edward, and thyself the sea, whose envious gulf did swallow up his life. Uh, kill me with thy weapon, not with words. My breast can better brook thy dagger's point than can my ears that tragic history. But wherefore dost thou come? Is it for my life? How I am an executioner. A persecutor, I am sure thou art. If murdering innocence be executing, why then thou art an executioner. Thy son I killed for his presumption. Hadst thou been killed when first thou didst presume, thou hadst not lived to kill a son of mine. And thus I prophesy that many a thousand which now mistrust no parcel of my fear. And many an old man's sigh, and many a widow's, and many an orphan's water standing eye. Men for their sons, wives for their husbands, and orphans for their parents' timeless death shall rule the hour that ever thou wast born. The owl shrieked at thy birth, an evil sign. The night crow cried, aboding luckless time. Dogs howled, and hideous tempers shook down trees. The raven rooked her on the chimney's top, and chattering pies, and dismal discord sung. Thy mother felt more than a mother's pain, and yet brought forth less than a mother's hope. To wit, an indigested and deformed lump, not like the fruit of such a goodly tree, Teeth hadst thou in thy head when thou wast born to signify thou camest to fight the world. And if the rest be true, which I have heard, thou camest. To... Hear no more! Die, prophet, in thy speech! For this amongst the rest I was ordained. I, and for much more slaughter after this, God forgive my sins and pardon thee. What? <laughs> Would the inspiring blood of Lancaster sink into the ground? What a thought it had mounted. <laughs> See how my sword weeps through the poor king's death. Oh, 
may such purple tears always be shed from those that wish the downfall of our house. Any spark of life yet be remaining, down, down to hell, and say I have seen thee thither. I, that has neither pity, love, nor fear. Indeed, tis true Henry told me of, for I have heard his mother say I came into this world with my legs forward. Have I not reason? Think ye to make haste and seek the ruin that unserved our right? The midwife wondered, and the woman cried, Oh, Jesus, bless us, he is born with teeth. And so I was, which plainly signified that I should snarl and bite and play the dog. Since the heavens have shaped my body so, let hell make crooked my mind answer to it. I have no brother, I am like no brother, and this word, love, which great beards call divine, be resident in men like another, and not in me. I am myself alone. Me from the light, but I will sort a pitchy day for thee, for I will buzz abroad such prophecies that Edward will be fearful of his life, and then to purge his fear, I'll be thy death. King Henry and his prince are gone. Clarence, thy turn is next, and then the rest, counting myself but bad until I be. I'll throw thy body in another room, and triumph, Henry, in thy day of doom. Thank you. And now we'll move on to your other one, Simon. All right, and then I can come back. Okay. Trivia. Uh, all right. We have um, Simon doing the comedy of errors, Antipholus. I'm calling it deep shame and great indignities. Take it away, Simon. My liege, I am advised what I say, neither disturbed with the effect of wine nor heady rash, provoked with raging ire albeit my wrongs might make one wiser mad. Uh, this woman locked me out this day from dinner. Uh, that goldsmith there, were he not packed with her, could witness it, for he was with me then, uh, who parted with me to go fetch a chain, promising to bring it to the Porpentine, where Balthazar and I did dine together. Our dinner done, and... Uh, and he not coming thither, I went to seek him. Now, in the street I met him, and in his company, that gentleman. There did this perjured goldsmith swear me down that I this day of him received the chain, uh, which God he knows I saw not, for the which he did arrest me with an officer. Now, I, I did obey and sent my peasant home for certain ducats. He with none returned. Uh, then I fairly, fairly, I bespoke the officer to go in person with me to my house. And by the way, we met my wife, her sister, and a, a rabble more of vile confederates. Uh, along with them, they brought one pinch, a hungry, lean-faced villain, a mere anatomy, a, a montebank, a threadbare juggler and a fortune teller, a needy, hollow-eyed, sharp-looking wretch, a dead-looking man. Now, this pernicious slave, forsooth, took on him as a conjurer, gazing in mine eyes, feeling my pulse, and with no faces were out facing me, cries out, I was possessed. Then all together they fell upon me, bound me, bore me thence, and in a darkish, dankish vault at home there left me and my man both bound together, till gnawing with my teeth my bounds in sunder, I gained my freedom, and immediately ran hither to your grace, whom I beseech to give me ample satisfaction for these deep shames and great indignities. Thank you, Simon. We will excuse you for your emergency and go back to Kayla. Kayla? Back with you shortly. 
Okay, Simon, we got you. Um, Kayla's doing Sonic 43. And uh, I don't, do I have a title for this? Let me see. Yes, When Most I Wink. So When Most I Wink, Kayla, did you? When most I wink, then do my eyes best see, for all the day they view things unrespected. But when I sleep, in dreams they look on thee, and darkly bright are bright, bright and dark directed. When thou whose shadow shadows doth make bright, how would thy shadows form, form happy show? For the clear day with thy much clearer light, when his unseeing eyes they shade, shine so, how would I say my eyes be blessed made by looking on thee in the living day? When in dead nights they fare in perfect shade, through heavy sleep on sightless eyes doth stay. All days are nights to see till I see thee, and all nights bright when dreams do show me thee. Thank you, Kayla. Very nice. Now I have to skip down a little bit. And I think the next one is mine. It is A Midsummer Night's Dream, Act 4, Scene 1. And I'm doing two pieces from the same uh, play, but at different times. We have other people in between. So uh, this one is Oberon. Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity for meeting her of late behind the wood seeking sweet favors from this hateful fool, I did upbraid her and fall out with her, for she his hairy temples then had rounded with a coronet of fresh and fragrant flowers. And that same dew which sometime on the buds was wont to swell like round and orient pearls, stood now with pretty floweret's eyes, like tears that did their own disgrace bewail, when I had at my pleasure taunted her, and she, in mild terms, begged my patience. I then did ask of her changeling child, which straight she gave me, and her fairy sent to bear him to my bower, and in fairyland, and now I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And, gentle fuck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he awaking when the other do may all to Athens back again repair, and think no more on this night's accidents, but as the fierce vexation of a dream. But first, I will release the fairy queen be as thou was wont to be, see as thou was wont to see. Diane's bud or Cupid's flower has such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake my sweet queen. And now, thank you, we move to Ben Hayes doing a, a very famous monologue from As You Like It, Act Two, Scene Seven, either Jake's or Jacques. And take it away, Ben. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts his acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, kneeling and puking in the nurse's arms. Then, the whining schoolboy, with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like snail unwillingly to school. And then, the lover, sighing like furnace and a woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow. Then a soldier, full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, is seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. Then the justice, in fair round belly with good cap on lind, in with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise saws and modern instances. And so he plays this part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon, 
with spectacles on nose and pouch on side. His, use, his youthful hose well sabbed, a world too wide for his shrunk shank, and his big manly voice turning again towards childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all, that ends this strange, eventful history, his second childishness and near oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. Thank you, Ben. And now we move on to my second piece from the same show and the same act and scene for scene one. And this one is, instead of Oberon, Bottom. And it's called Bottom's Dream. When my cue comes, call me and I will answer. My next is Melissa Pyramus. Hi ho, Peter Quince, flute, the bellows mender, snout the tinker, starveling. God's my life stolen hence and left me asleep. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass. If he go about to expound this dream, me thought I was, uh, there is no man can tell what. Uh, me thought I was, and me thought I had, but man is a patched fool. If he will offer to say what me thought I had, the eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen, man's hand is not able to taste, his tongue seen, man's hand is, oh, nor his heart to repeat what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream because it hath no bottom. And I will sing it in the latter end of a play before the Duke peradventure to make it the more gracious. I shall sing it at her death. <laughs> Thank you. And now we are on to our trivia part. Uh, I do have trivia questions for you. So let me see if I can stump the panel here. Um, Okay, there is a novel coming out in, I think it's next week. I've already ordered it, and it's about one of Shakespeare's children. It, they've, no one's ever written a novel about Shakespeare's children. So this is very unusual. Uh, what is the name of the novel, which is the same as the name of one of Shakespeare's children? Who's got an answer to this one? Anybody? No, Dom. What about you, Dom? No, Dom? no idea. No idea. Oh, Dara? I, I haven't been keeping up with the latest releases, so. <laughs> oh, I thought the library person would have this one. Ben? <laughs> oh, is it Elizabeth? I'm trying to think of her. No, nope. that's not it. Kayla? Hey. And the name is, which is almost the title of one of his plays. Hamnet, H A M. Oh, I did know that. That was his son who died. And this lady has written a novel about him. So it's, I believe it's coming out next week. I don't remember the name of the author at the moment. I'm okay. checking the catalog now, and okay. we will have it soon. Soon. I Well, yep. I already ordered it from Amazon. Oops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll uh, have it at Central, Manlius, and Soul Bay. Cool. See that? The library is a, is a great resource. You don't have to go to that big thing and buy it. You can get it for free at the library, right? Yeah. Okay. So now the next one is, and I think this is going to be our last one. Um, I have a quote for you. The person who said it would be very hard, but then I have a question about it. So the quote is, you need a good story in the globe. If you're not wondering what's going to happen next, you become aware that you're standing or sitting on a bench. Who said that? Famous, current, alive, television 
and stage actor? Patrick Stewart. Shakespeare actor. Patrick Stewart. Nope, not Patrick Stewart. Good guess, though. Can you hear me, Ronnie? I can hear you, Simon. How could I not hear you? <laughs> huh? <laughs> okay, now the, the answer to that one is Mark Rylance. And Simon guessed that the other day. Uh, during our uh, rehearsal, he guessed that uh, as a different one, uh, a different question. So the question is, and I think Simon knows this, so I'm going to go to you last on this one, Simon. Who built the new Globe Theatre that is now sitting in London on, uh, in South Wall? Who built it? He, uh, Hint, he was in a, he it was, he, he just passed away a couple of years ago. He was an American, a famous uh, film, I believe, producer. Anybody know? Da, 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 da. I know, but I don't know the name. You know, but you don't know the name. Okay, yeah. so we're going to yeah. go go to yeah. you because you are a resident uh, Shakespeare expert from Rochester. All right. Oh, I've just, you just. You froze? Uh oh, he's frozen. He's frozen. Frozen, Simon mm. cannot have an answer. The answer is. Sam Wanamaker, Sam yeah. Wanamaker. He was famous in Hollywood and uh, he went over and he started, he raised the money for it. He got someone to design it, obviously like the original and uh, he did it all. And if it wasn't for an American, there wouldn't be a Globe Theater in London now. How do you like that? Amazing. Okay, so I think we're past our time. And uh, Simon is frozen, so he can't ask any questions. <laughs> so uh, we will uh, wrap it up there and say, see, uh, we're going to take a two-week vacation, uh, and we will be back August uh, 6th, which is the day before Much Ado About Nothing opens. So yep. we'll see you in three weeks, uh, August 6th. We'll have a, a great show for you then. We have alternative shows coming for you, uh, abridged, uh, Romeo and Juliet, the next two Tuesdays, and Abridged Julius Caesar, the two Tuesdays after that. All of those at 9.30 p.m., 9.30 p.m., okay? So thank you very much. Everybody wave goodbye, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.